What's up, peeps? My name's Ian. I sell books on eBay. Um, today's Saturday. Friday was yet another poor day of sales. I'm going to sit down for a minute. Um, it was three days in a row where sales have been roughly half what they have been for the rest of the month, uh, which is a wee bit concerning. You have good days, you have bad days. That's always going to be the case. Um, usually a couple of slow days and then it picks back up again. We had a couple of slow days and then it didn't pick back up again. The weekends are either brilliant or really, really slow. I've got a feeling this weekend's going to be really, really slow, which puts us in a rather precarious position. Um, cash flow is, you know, key. It's essential in keeping this going. We're not making lots of money here. So it's a really, really fine balance between what you sell, what you buy, and actually being able to make enough money to pay your bills, pay the rent, etc. at the end of the month. And as it's nearly the end of the month, and there's not an awful lot of money there for wages at the moment because I have been trying to expand the overall stock over the last few weeks, you know, um, you know trying to buy about 50% more than what I sell every day to expand the selection and obviously boost the overall sales. And that had worked until three days ago, but now it's gone slow. So we may not be sourcing anything for the next week. We're going to have to run down the stock a wee bit, which is a bit annoying. Um, and see if the sales recover. If we got a good sales day today, I'll go to the car boot in the morning and see if I can pick up another 100 or so books. Um, but we're going to have to keep a very, very close eye on it and make sure that we can actually survive at the end of the month. Small business. I used to work in an office. Hated it. 15 years as a civil servant. Uh, they're all crooks. Um, I didn't say that, but they're all crooks. So flipped over to this, took a chance, and it just about pays the bills, but it's always very, very tight at the end of the month. That's why I'm trying to expand it to a point where it will earn a wage and pay the bills at the end of the month, uh, and there might even be a wee bit of profit beyond that that I can just keep reinvesting into the business and continue to grow it. So let's have a look at what's actually going out today. Uh, first up, we have another bundle of Katie Flynn books. So she's been really popular. I don't know if it's a summer thing or not. Um, it might be. But we'll get these packed and wrapped. Um, it's that kind of sun lounger beach fiction. Is how a lot of this gets described. I don't know if that's a fair description. But it certainly it has been selling well over the last few weeks. Um, and one of these authors that really easy to pick up. You'll always find a few Katie Flynn books floating around. Uh, and a lot of people, you know, they're picking books to sell. Ignore them because they're not high value, you know. You know 250, 265 each. But it's buy three, get two free. So they really are cheap books for selling. But the volume makes up for it. So this order total value of this order was £11.30, that includes £3.35 for postage. So that's about 8 quid coming in. The fees, assuming it was a promoted listing, which it was, yes, the fees are going to be about £3. So that takes us down to around a fiver made off of that. But the five books themselves, let's see, cost me about £1.25. So, three to four pounds made off of that little bundle, which is, you know, 70 to 85 pence a book, there or thereabouts. So it's not huge money, but if you can sell a lot of them, it's worthwhile. And, you know, there are better ways to make money of that, I have no doubt. But I like books, so I'm sticking with the books. Anyway, that weighs 1,500 grams. And it's going to WA8, whatever that may be. Okay, so that's the first one that's going out. Well, probably go out on Monday, I don't think I'll make it to the post office today. Bit of a later start. Right, uh, 
Next up is another of the women's fiction bundle. We've got Jojo Moyes, uh, Me Before You and After You. So although it's buy two, get one free, they've only bought two. Which makes it slightly more profitable for me. But not much, that extra book's really just to give people a good price. Um, sending out an extra book costs me an additional 25p. So it doesn't make a huge extra profit. Uh, in fact, it makes me 25 pence more selling just two rather than the three. So I'm not giving one away. This weighs 700 grams. So this, so I'm totally paid £8.85 for this. That includes the 335 postage. So £5.50. Less, I'll pay about 250 ish in fees. So that takes us down to about £3. Books will have cost me 50 pence. So £2.50 off of two books. So when I sell two books together like that, I'm making just over a pound, you know, kind of about 120, 125 per book. Uh, obviously, it's 15, 20 p in postage to come off of that as well. So that's, you know, that's probably the most profitable way for me to sell them. People buying two books, uh, so the postage is low, and I get reasonable return. Anyway, that's Jojo. Right, I had a few uh, individual book sales, you know, just singles going out. I am just going to take a slip of my coffee, I forgot I had this at Old Bold. Down in one. Right, yes, some individuals. So first up we've got Bernie Marsden, Where of My Guitar. Hardcover, first edition. Don't even know if it went to any further editions, but it probably did. Uh, so, an inside story of British rock and roll. Somebody has paid, that was £7 plus 3.35 postage, so 10.35 all in. All in. 10.35 in total is what they have paid for that book. Uh, again, by cost for that is going to have been about 25p so a couple of quid in fees so probably would cost me about £3.50 to buy the book pay the fees and wrap it up so I've made £3 on that one which again is, is not bad I would love to just sell single books for a tenner all day, every day. Uh, I, sell, I mean like the last few days have been really slow but that's still been 40 books a day so if I sold 40 individual books and made three quid on each of them I would be delighted with that uh, but it's probably one or two a day averages selling just single books and most of them are below the five pound mark rather than you know seven pounds and above such as this one uh, 600 grams and bernie marsden is going to cf64 cf64 and then there's another part to that obviously yeah okay. let's i know it's getting to i mean our up here in Scotland, the schools are already back. <coughs> Excuse me. But it must be getting very close to back to school time. For the majority of the UK, i.e. England and Wales. So I don't know if that's going to have a wee bit of an effect on sales volumes for a few days. But next we have Daniel Steele, another bundle of hers. All was popular. And always easy to pick up. Um, I'm beginning to get a really clear sense of which of her books are good. So if you're looking for that style and size, 
rather than some of the older paperbacks. Our hardcovers don't seem to sell at all. Uh, I still quite a lot where I see them, they're not cheap. As it bulks up the listing. <coughs> but it seems to be the paperbacks in that particular format that do the best. So, I've had a wee tickly cough for the last few days. It's a bit annoying. Scratch at the back of my throat or something. So, the nail steel. And again, just like Katie Flynn, it's a cheap purchase. Oh, it seems collected tax. Oh, it's because I don't have channel hours. Um, so £11. About 1085 for that lot. Less than 35 postage. Um, about eight pounds. Just three quid in fees as ever. So a bit of fiver. One seventy five to buy them. So three three pounds fifty for selling five books. That is the profit on that order. So all those twelve orders going out today. If the average profit on each one is only about three quid, then that's not a very good day's wages. It's atrocious, actually. Um, and considerably less than what we need to be hitting on a day to day basis. If you do. So, yeah, when it's going to Channel Islands, it means it's a lot. Fish the part of the UK, it still goes through all the whole um, international posts, so I'll need to print a customs label and all of those irritating things. Well, you just print it and stack it on, it's not that big a deal, the system does it all for you. But it is what it is. Right, next up, we have another single sale going out. Uh, Doctor Who, Plague City, and that one was went for £4.50 plus the postage. So again, a couple of quid of fees on that one. Um, well, no, it didn't go promoted, so we have about pound ten in fees. So that takes us down to three pound forty. Uh, I picked up a whole stack of these for next to nothing. So it'll be less than twenty five p my cost for that. The whole printing its own, but let's see, that's what I try and keep my whole average buy cost as. So we'll just call it 25p. So another couple of quid made on that single little order. Not big money, but it all adds up. I just have to keep that as my mantra. So that I don't lose heart and hope. Shoving out all these little orders. And another part, when you're making so little on each item, it has to be stuff that you can pack up easily, that can be done quickly. 400 grams, and it's going to W4. Yes, if I was to spend, you know, three, four hours a day packing up 100 pounds of sales, then I'd be as well going and get my job in a local supermarket for the money that it makes it wouldn't be worthwhile but you know we can get this rattled through in half an hour so that makes it more worthwhile and a wee bundle of wimpy kid books next five of these we have covers picked up quite a few of these the last week um, so we'll expect a couple of sales in them over the weekend and then i won't have many left until i get more again and then there'll be more sales that they're always popular, if they're priced right, and at the moment I've got seem to have them priced right. So five Wimpy Kid books, £11.30. So again, that's about £8 when you deduct what they pay for postage. £1.25 to buy them. That takes us down to, well, let's just call it 6 50 for... Ease of brain. 
and there will have been about three pound fees on that one. So again, roughly three quid for selling five books. So no, no big valuable sales today. They do happen, as you'll have seen over the last week or so, but they didn't happen yesterday, unfortunately. Uh, although one of the big value sales that I did have last week, I got a return request on it, which is a bit frustrating. But it's not too annoying because it was one of the grooming books, the pet grooming books. The grooming books, that seems dodgy, one of the pet grooming books, uh, which I had two of them and they both sold within a couple of days of listing. So as soon as it comes back, I'm going to give them their £40 back that they paid for it, obviously. Need to. I will give them their thanks, but what you do. Um, because it's a return, but I'm fairly confident it will sell again very, very quickly. Um, the frustrating part is, instead of it then being a book that I paid 25 pence for, it's now going to be a book that I've paid nearly £7 for, when you take into account the postage that I've paid to send it, and the postage that I've paid to get it back. So that means I need to stick the price up by a tenner. So instead of selling it for 40 to 50, I'll be selling it for 50 to 60. Uh, when that happens with low price books, you don't even bother getting them back because it just you just have to take the hit right off the profits that you made. Right, next up we've got three DVDs from the classic listing. Uh, Wizard of Oz, Bridge Too Far and The Great Escape. Um, do do do, £7.75 for these three. So, not huge money. Be a couple of pounds in fees coming off of that. And it'll be three pounds to post it. So, I'm only making a couple of quid on that one. However, the price I pay for DVDs, um, it's usually 10 pence or less that I'll put out for these ones. Most of the time, I'm looking for, you know, 10 for a pound. I've got one place I go that does 20 for a pound, or up to 20 for a pound, but to be honest, their selection's never massive, because they just churn them, so it's not often that you actually find 20, but there's usually more than 10, so it keeps the price below the 10 pence, which is absolutely fine, so only a couple of quid made on it, but the cost is next to nothing, very easy to list, store, and pack, so I'm quite happy to take a couple of pounds for literally a few minutes work. Um, and again, if I could do these all day, I would be quite happy, because although it feels like not a lot of money, you know, a hundred orders like that every day would take literally a couple of hours to buy, process, pack, pick and pack, and that would make very good money indeed but there's a limited market as such uh, maybe as I build more stock that'll change we shall see right next up going to DT3 whatever that may be we have a wee bundle of Ian Banks so we've got the bridge consider Phlebas fearsome engine walking in glass and the algebraist so three of his sci-fi books here was Ian M. Banks a couple of his classics. Um, I love Ian Banks. The Wasp Factory, that was just like a mind bender when I was a teenager. Never quite recovered from reading it from it. Um, just need to try and get the bundle nicely balanced. So because Mr. Banks is slightly rarer to pick up, uh, not a fast seller, but when people want a particular set of books, they're willing to pay a little bit more for them. Um, these are all more expensive than the likes of your Danielle Steele ones. So for those five books, £13.90 paid. So that includes the three thirty five charge for postage. So three quid in fees, making about seven pounds off of that. 
less than a 125 by cost. So maybe £5.50 on packaging and everything's taken care of. Uh, so that's a little over a pound a book, which again is quite good. So, the, so you can make on average more than a pound a book. However, those ones don't sell as fast. You have to wait for the right people to come along at the right time. So it's not the same volume of interest. Whereas things like you know the Katie Flynn, Danielle Steele, James Patterson. There's a lot of people looking for them all the time. So you can churn the volume. And these ones you don't find as many. So therefore you have to consider what you're doing. Anyway, blah blah blah. Right, next up, another individual book sale. Oh look, there you go. Uh, it's an original paperback copy of The Hunger Games. So this is the first paperback that came out. It's been reissued, I don't know how many times. But uh, this is before the movie, all the rest of it. Uh, I've had that sitting for probably a couple of months. But it sold for £4.30 plus postage. So again, was this a promoted listing? wasn't a promoted listing, so we've got about a pound ten in fees coming out of that. So we made about three pounds on that book, uh, and it wasn't any more expensive to pick up. So that's a couple of quid actual profit on that one there, which I'm quite happy with. I mean, I'm always finding more and more slightly more valuable books. So when you've got one or two, you can wait months for them to sell. If you've got a couple of hundred, then they'll sell more often. And I would love to sell more of these ones all the time. But, yeah, you just have to wait and see. You just have to be careful if you've got a book that's worth a wee bit more, so like four pound odd. That one's listed for which is good but if it sits for two years then even paying for the shop subscription it still works out six pence a month that you're paying to have it listed so if it sits for let's say 20 months just to keep the arithmetic simple any 42 20 months at six pence so that's a pound 20 that's going to cost you to have that sat in your shop so that four pound thirty that you're selling it for is suddenly down at three quid. So you're only making, you know, your usual pound profit off of it rather than the couple of pounds. Um, and if it went on promoted listing, having sat for that amount of time, then you're only making pennies. So you've got to be careful that you're only putting up individual listings for books that will actually sell within a few months. If they're sitting for longer than that, then if they're low price, you're going to start killing any profit and you may actually be making a loss without realising it, which is a big risk and one you probably don't want to be taking. Right, next up we have a bundle of Simon Koenig. I've got quite a few of these. Um, kits and starts, these go out. Don't sell one for weeks and then a couple of bundles seem to go out at the same time. Uh, just one bundle today, but I've picked up quite a few of these in the last week. A couple of people handing in their little book collections. Um, oh, that's that little bubble wrap just run out. Actually, I'll get a wee bit more out of it. And luckily the order arrived, so we're good to go with the next roll. Mad. Yeah, so Simon Koenig, again, he's... Not a huge amount of them in the shops, although he's popular, so I priced them slightly higher. Maybe like 285 or 295 a book, but then it's you know buy three, get two free. Uh, so eleven pounds ninety paid for this order, that includes the postage. And so eight pounds something coming into that. Is this a promoted listing? It was not a promoted listing again, there was quite a few organics yesterday. Uh, so we've got about 250 in fees to come off of that. So probably between four and five pounds profit for the five books. So around about 80 pence a book. 
so a wee bit more profitable than the you know, mass market 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 Danny Steel etc. But still not going to make us a millionaire. K T eight. Where is K T eight? Who knows? I'll find out when I print the postage label. Fifteen hundred grams. Bang in the pile. Right, we're nearly done. Two orders left. And then the second last one is. I thought it was manga when I picked it up, but it's not. It's an actual novel. Hack AI Buster. No idea what that is. But Tokyopop.com. Uh, but it's sold for £6 plus postage. So whatever it is, I'll take that. Uh, again. Is this a promoted listing? Yes, this was a promoted listing, so we'll have about £2.30 in fees. No, £2.50 in fees to go out on that one. So, take that off for the £6. Within it. £3 summon. Pennies to buy it. So, 2 3 quid profit maybe. Again, not bad if you can do lots of these. Uh, and it's, again, it would be great just to do these kind of higher, slightly higher value individual books all the time. But with this available stock of those, it really would be, you know, I'd make a few pounds a week, which is, is no good. I need to make some sort of a living out of this. So that's why I also have the vast majority of what I do is volume over value, which is fine. Okay, as I said before, when you're looking for specialist stuff, it's going to need you to build that expertise and go out and find it. If you're looking for volume stuff, then the only knowledge and expertise that's required there is for somebody to be told this author, this author, and this author. Pick them all up. So it doesn't need you to be there which makes it a business rather than a job. Um, a lot of the you know, eBay resellers that you see, uh, there are a few exceptions obviously, but for the most part, although they're running a business, they don't actually have a business. Um, it is just a job. If they were to try and sell that business, which you know, everybody's gonna have a, a get out at some point, uh, you can't work forever, then, they are the kind of key element of the business, you know, the sourcing side, whether it's to do with the knowledge, the contacts, you know, whatever it might be. So if they don't work at that business, that business ceases to exist. Um, those that are turning it into a business are bringing people in, taking them out, spreading that experience and that knowledge. The risk there, that if you bring in somebody, let's say somebody off the street, uh, just to describe it that way and you give them all of that knowledge and show them all of those contacts then there's absolutely nothing to stop them turning around and just doing it themselves and you can see that happening with a few people so most who most of the resellers who have more than one person involved it's the family partners kids mums and dads aunties uncles whatever it might be um but it still means that that value of the business is there so if you were to sell on the business then they would need to continue being staff and only you would get to step away from it. So that doesn't create a valuable business, it just creates a job. It might be a very well paid job if you're good at it and there seems to be a lot of people out there who are very good at it, especially when they have like social media revenue coming in as well. But what I'm looking for is something that can be a business that does not need me to be there. And not just say, oh, I could take a couple of weeks off and somebody else could do the bits that I normally do. But where it's very easy to put in place the individuals to do particular roles within that, where they can be trained up and you can have somebody who just goes out and picks up stuff. You can have somebody who just does your packing, have somebody who just does the post office runs, does the listings, etc. So it becomes quite compartmentalised. It doesn't require a huge amount of, you know, personalised knowledge. 
Experience will always make things more efficient, but it doesn't need that personalised knowledge. Books are easy to source. Um, the more exceptional stuff, again, if the, the way I buy is I don't sit and look up everything that I see if it's unusual. Because my cost, I only buy stuff if the cost is low. If it looks half interesting or if it's in good condition, I'll just pick it up anyway. Um, every week I leave behind thousands of books because either I can't afford to buy them because that would take me into you know, hundreds of pounds for a good pick up um, or I just don't have the space for them. But uh, yesterday, for example, I picked up 100 and 190 books. Um, that was me picking through, but I left behind maybe five or 600 that were really good condition paperbacks, but I don't have space for them. Um, and they aren't authors that I currently have listed in bundles. If I had them currently listed in bundles, then I would have been picking them up anyway and adding to those bundles, but it requires building new bundles, etc., and it takes up space. You can see a bit of the carnage and the chaos behind me here. Uh, I've got an entire spare room full of books. I've got a stack of books that I've got nowhere to put away at the moment because the sales have been slow, so it hasn't created the gaps on the shelves. Uh, I've got a wall of DVDs. I've got a lot of, a lot of space taken up at the moment. So until business is at a level where I can take on a, you know, some sort of storage unit, some sort of workspace um, to be able to store what I've got plus probably 10 times that so that I can expand a business, then I can't pick up all these extra authors. But I've already got the opportunity to pick up 10 times what I do at the moment in a week. Um, I just need the space to take that opportunity to do it. So that's why I'm focusing on books and trying to create a business rather than just a job. I'm 50 next year, feeling old. I do not want to be waiting 20 years to retire. Another reason I get out of civil service. So again, it's looking at for over the next 45 years, developing this into a business of a reasonable scale where it's going to require a handful of employees to keep it running. Uh, as soon as I've, you've got a handful of employees, then that's where you're looking for some sort of general manager to take over the day-to-day -day side of it as well. And at that point, that means that I can move my attention elsewhere and step to the side. Uh, that's the idea. We'll see how it all works out. It might all fizzle out in a week if CBLs, if, uh, eBay sales continue to plummet, but yeah, we'll wait and see. Anyway, I've got one more lot to pack, but I'm going to have to go and open up the next row of bubble wrap, which takes a minute. And I don't want to bore you with that piece. So the last order that's going out are five Jill Mansell books. Another of the popular high turnover authors. Um, £11.60 paid for those five. She's got a slightly be better price on her than like Sir Daniel Steele. So again, about £3 profit for the five books, which I'm quite happy with. And I'll just spot you one there. It's got a few pages turned over inside. Let's just fix them before we pack them up. And they'll all flatten out. They'll all stand the parcel. So anyway, that's Saturday. Hopefully not another bad day of sales. I think we've done about 15 quid so far this morning. So, so far it's not looking great. Um, but it will pick up. It's up and down, you know. Waves, uh, peaks and troughs, all the rest of it. And I've still got about 50 books from the lot that I picked up yesterday to get listed including a couple of new little bundles, one of which I'll show you. We've got Dark Diaries, we've got some, a stack of Douglas Adams, so I'll turn those into bundled listings. But uh, The Wizard of Id, does anyone remember him? So a whole stack of Coronet Wizard of Id paperbacks. Um, and having a look, they sell, it seems to be from between four and eight pounds for each one, because they're all oldies. You know, it was at 60 pence, original RRP, so they've uh, got a wee bit of age to them. Um, so I'll create a listing, I've got 13 of them. Uh, I'll stick them all on, five or six pounds each, for the usual three for two. And we'll see if they sell or not, but that'll be one of the new listings going up. Let's say Dog Diaries, Douglas Adams, and then a few to add to the listings that I've already got. Including another little stack that won't be good. L.G. Ross, I love getting L.G. Ross books. Uh, some Selma Rushdie, Geoffrey Archer, James Herbert, Lucinda Riley, C.S. Lewis, Ludlum, 
George Martin, Louis de Bernier lens. Yeah, a few to go, and a, a few kind of rare and unusual ones as well. But anyway, that's all for today. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. I'll see you soon. Bye bye. Oh, before bye bye, like, subscribe, watch another video, man. You know, you never know. You might actually like it. Probably not, but you might. Anyway, bye bye.